a worksheet. You're so excited, I can tell. How was the wooden marinette related to the wooden diving board? In case you don't know what a marinette is, it's one of those puppets on strings. So we're going to figure out how those two are related. Use a calculator to solve each problem. Round decimal answers to the nearest tenth. Find your answer in the answer column and notice the two letters next to it. Write these letters in the spaces over the exercise number at the bottom of the page. So what we're going to do is we're going to answer either area questions or if we look down here we have some perimeter questions. We're going to answer those. When we get a correct answer, so let's say SA is the answer for number one. We'll come down here, we'll find the number one, and we will write an S and an A in those spots. Okay? All right, let's look at what we have here. The first set of three questions deals with this word problem. World record. The largest jigsaw puzzle ever made was 85 by 55 feet and had 15,520 pieces. It was constructed by the United Way in Keene, New Hampshire. So we're looking at a rectangle and it, first we need to find the area of the puzzle in feet squared. Then we need to find the area of the puzzle in inches squared. And we need to find the average size of each piece. And that shows us inches squared. So the first thing we need to do is on a separate sheet of paper, that would probably be easiest, we are going to draw a rectangle. And I'm gonna draw it over here just to make life easier. Let's make it a different color so you guys can see it. Okay, yellow green, let's see how that shows up. Oh, that's good. Okay, so here's our rectangle. And we know that it is 85 by 55. So here's some important information you wanna underline or highlight. So we're gonna write that by our rectangle. We're just labeling the sides right now. So we have 85 by 55. Now how do you find area of a rectangle? You need to look on your formula sheet and you will notice that the area um, formula for a rectangle is area equals, and don't get confused, that L that kind of looks like a one is really length times width. And you can write capital letters so you don't get confused and put a one right there. So first we're going to multiply length times width, that's pretty simple, to find the area in feet because they gave us the information in feet. So our handy dandy little calculator, we'll pull that up, clear it out, and we are going to multiply 85 by 55, our length and our width. 85 times 55 we get 4,675. So we're going to put that answer right here. 4,675. Okay? And as you can see, that's DT at the bottom. So for number one, and I'm going to scroll for number one down here, I'm going to put this DT that has the same answer as our number one. So you can write down here number one DT and then you can cross it out because we're only going to use it once. And you see there's a lot more options than there are questions. So we're not going to be able to use process of elimination with this. You're, we're really going to have to find the answers for all of them. But that's how you do the puzzle if you want the extra credit at the end. Again, if you get some gibberish down here, right, words that don't make sense, that means you must have done some math wrong, so you need to go back. Okay, so let's go back to the top so we can look. And what do we do when we're given feet but we need inches? Well, guys, you you got to know this. How many inches are in a foot? So think about a ruler. How many inches are in a foot? Because your rulers are normally one foot long. If you don't know, I'm going to go ahead and tell you that one foot equals 
12 inches. That's an important thing. You should really have that memorized because they're not going to tell you that on a test. If they ask you to go from feet to inches, they're not going to tell you that you have 12 inches in one foot, so you need to know that. So what we're going to do, the easiest way to do this, is to go ahead and multiply our length and width, our 55 and 85, by the 12 inches. So if we multiply by 12, now all of a sudden we're turning our feet into inches, and we can answer number 2 because that asks for the area, but it asks for it in inches squared. So what I want to do is take my 55 times my 12 and my 85 times 12. And remember, the 12 comes from the fact that there's one foot in 12 inches in one foot. So let's grab the calculator real quick. 12 times 55. 660. I'll come over here and just right above it I'm just going to write 660 and I'm going to put inches so I understand what this stands for. And then I'm going to go back to my calculator and I'm going to do 12 times 85. 1020. So I'm going to come over here, grab my pencil again, and right down here I'm going to write 1020. And again, we're talking inches. So I'm going to write inches right here. Now, remember, area is the same thing. The area formula doesn't change. Our numbers have changed because we went from feet to inches. But we still multiply length times width to find the area of this puzzle. So I'm going to take my new length and my new width, which is 660 times 1,020. Ooh, big number. And for this one, move this guy down here, for this one I get a big number, 673,200. Okay, so again, you would come over here, you find your answer, in this case it's L-Y, go down to number two and write those two letters in that spot. Finally, the average. I don't know if you guys remember uh, from last year working with this or in sixth grade, but the other word for average is mean. It's when you add up all the uh, pieces or all, you know, all the data points and divide by how many you have. Well, we know that we have 673,200 inches squared worth of puzzle pieces, right? That's the area. If we take this and divide by the 15,520, we'll find the average size of each piece for inches squared. So I'm going to do this work. If you can follow me, I'm going to do it over here. This is why it's really helpful to do this on a separate sheet of paper and just staple it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my total area, 673. Oh, let's try that one again. All right, there we go. 6,700. 600,000, with a little 200 back here, and I'm going to divide that by how many pieces I have, which they tell us right here, 15,520. All right, so I'm going to divide those two. All right, I already had my... 673,200 on there, so I'm going to just hit divide by 15,520, and I get a big long decimal. Now remember, if we go back up here, if we take our highlighter and go up here, it told us to round to the nearest tenth, so I'm going to come down here. Now remember, ten spot is your dime, so that's your three. You look right behind it. What is that 7 going to do to the 3? 
five and above, give it a shove. Very good. So that seven is going to make the three into a four. So our answer is really, let me grab my pencil here. My answer is really going to be each, the average size of each piece is 43.4 inches squared. So let's see if we find that. And again, if you come over here, do I see it? Oh, there it is. It's at the bottom, TH. So for number three, I would write a TH. If you come over here and you do not find your answer, go back and check your math before you ask a teacher because it could be maybe you just hit a, a button wrong or something like that on the calculator. So go back and check your math, plug it in the calculator again, make sure you get the right answer. All right, let's look at the second set of questions, four, five, and six. And it's talking about the world record for the largest quilt uh, designed by A. Plateau, measures 69.6 .6 by 99.5 feet. And it was made from 16,140 equal size squares sewn together. So the area of the quilt, you would again take your same uh, rectangle, right? You would draw another rectangle. Did I get my rectangle? Let's try again. There we go. You would take your rectangle and you would label it with the two numbers that are given. So here we are given the 600, or excuse me, the 69.6, .6, which I'll put over here. and the 99.5, which I'll put at the bottom. To be honest, since you're just multiplying these two numbers, our commutative property, which says it doesn't matter the order you multiply them, you could put the 99 over here and the 69 down here. It's not gonna make a big difference. So once you multiply them, you should have the answer for number four. Not gonna do that for you because it's the same thing up here, just with different numbers. And again, for inches, right? You're going to have to multiply them by 12. So make sure you remember to multiply each length and width by 12, and that'll give you inches. And to find the area for each square, again in inches, you're going to take this answer and divide it by the number of uh, squares you have. If you forget when you're doing all this work, just pause the video, rewind. Um, and watch it again. So to find the area of the quilt, it's just length times width. To find the area of the quilt in inches, you have to multiply both the length and the width by 12, because one foot equals 12 inches, and then multiply them for your final answer. And then to get the area, you need to do some division. You need to divide your answer for the area of the whole quilt by how many pieces there are. That will give you the area for each. Okay, if we look at our third set, seven, eight, and nine, the world's longest buffet table was 3,304.8 or 8 tenths feet long and 8.2 feet wide. On June 19, 1982, approximately 4,000 people, including H.M., High Majesty maybe, I don't know. The King of Sweden were seated at the table. So the first question says, what's the area of the table? The second question, what's the perimeter? And the third question, if 4,000 people were equally spaced around the perimeter of the table, how far apart were they sitting? This is another division problem. So you wanna draw your rectangle draw it over here in the black spot because I think it'll make it easier to see. So we have our large table and we are going to have 3,000 comma 304.8 and that's going to be feet long and then we have 8.2 feet wide. Again, 
to find the area of any rectangle, we use the formula area equals length times width. So our length, I made our length this guy, the big one, and our width is 8.2. So now that we've labeled them, you just plug and chug. Perimeter is a little different. Remember um, from our notes, perimeter is just adding up all the sides, right? So perimeter is just the sum of all the sides. So go ahead and label your other two sides with the correct numbers. Rectangles, the top and bottom are what we call congruent. They are the same. So this is going to be 3,304.8. And then this side, our two side pieces left to right are also congruent or the same. So this is going to be 8.2. And then you literally just grab your calculator and add up all four numbers for the perimeter. It is sum. And you see it doesn't have the feet squared because we're not multiplying anything. Finally, if 4,000 people were equally spaced around the perimeter, so see right here, it tells you what number it wants you to use. It wants you to use the perimeter number. How far apart were they sitting? So you're going to take this answer and you're going to divide it by 4,000. And that will tell you exactly how far apart each person was sitting. Again, if you're not finding your answers over here, check your math first. If all your calculations work out, then grab a teacher. All right, the last set of questions. The largest American flag ever made was first displayed on March 22, 1980 and measures 411 by 210 feet. So um, hope you know the American flag is a rectangle. So we can put that down here. And we are going to go ahead and label it. We have 411 by 210. And again, this is going to be my length. It's always good to make sure you label it with the letters. So when you use a formula, it really is just a plug and chug. And there's my width. So area of the flag in feet, you uh, multiply, you know, length times width, and that'll give you that one. Now this is an interesting one. Look at this. Area of the flag in yards. Do you know how many feet are in a yard? If you don't, don't worry. I will let you know. It's not yards and feet. It's feet and yards. For one yard, you have three feet, approximately. It, there's a little bit of leftover, but approximately one yard equals three feet. So instead of multiplying this, by three, we already have feet, right? They gave us the dimensions in feet. So we're actually going to have to divide it, right? Divide each one by three to figure out how many yards, divide this guy by three too, to figure out how many yards it is approximately. Then you would again multiply your new length and your new width and you would have the flag in yards squared. The last question says, the fabric used for the flag weighs about 1.6 pounds per yard squared. About how much does the flag weigh? So right here, they're telling you they want you to use the number for yards. So you're going to take your answer. You're going to multiply it because it's per. And we know per in math means to multiply by 1.6. And that should give you your answer of how much it weighs. Make sure you show me your math for every problem. You can do it on the back of the sheet. You can do it on a separate sheet and staple it. Whatever is easiest for you. Uh, if you have any further questions, ask your teacher.